Welcome to the second half of the uh, data, let me get the right name here, data formats, I believe it was data format session A2. Uh, for the second half, we have a hands-on vendor agnostic MRI data conversion to MRD, or for those who remember when it started, ISM or MRD um, format. Uh, we'll be hearing from Dr. Javed, I probably butchered that, and Ramaswamy um, from the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute at the National Institutes of Health. This is going to be an interactive session, but we'll, I believe, start with presentation, and maybe we'll be bouncing back and forth between presentations and interactivity. But with that, I'll hand it over. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Eric. Um, so hi, hi, everyone. Good afternoon from the NIH. We're up on the East Coast of the USA, and welcome wherever you are in the world right now. Um, thanks for joining us for this session. Um, we're going to be talking about vendor agnostic MR data and specifically focusing on MR raw data or MRD or formerly the unpronounceable ISM or MRD. Um, I'm Rajam Sormi, I work at NHLBI and daily drive uh, MRD formats and I'll pass on to my colleague. Hi, uh, my name is Essen Javed, I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the NHLB as well and um, I very much like Raj use MRD on a very regular basis. And um, I think to start off, I'll just say I have no nothing to disclose. So and then Raj can take over and talk about MRD a little bit. I also have nothing to disclose. So this is, uh, as you've discovered in a general Zoom chat. So you can just message us if you find yourself on the resources. And just if you haven't found yourself there, I post it in the chat, but just for anyone who doesn't like looking at Zoom chats, you can go to the, um, the program, scroll down to our current session, and this link will take us to the, the GitHub pages where we've got some, some data that we're going to be converting, including some Siemens data, uh, GE data, and some Broca data, um, and some example codes in Python MATLAB, and some shell scripts to give us an example. The slides are also available here, and I've tried to put together a sort of an installation guide. So if, if you're installing this as we go, it's absolutely fine. If you have any troubles, just ping us and one of us can try to help you along the way. Um, but we also have, if you're interested in this in general, Friday meetings, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. So just, just going to say that we have resources for you to help, help you get started with, um, with this tutorial. Um, and I will also point you towards, we did a Gazatron summer school last year, um, and there's some YouTube uh, videos for that covers MRD in a bit more uh, uh, deeper than we're getting into right now. So in this session, uh, I'm just gonna, you can see my screen right before I just, yes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, perfect. I need to move this thing out of the way. Okay. So, so yeah, please follow along. If you haven't got this all installed, um, we generally run this on an Ubuntu systems. It should work with the Windows WSL as, uh, as well. Um, and I, I tried this all on a virtual machine and it worked fine. And so again, if you have troubles, just let us know because they do exist. So we're gonna just briefly touch on the MRD structure and uh, in the previous part of the session for the BESIS also went into this a bit more. Um, so we're going to recap that, look at the uh, MRD viewer that our moderator Eric actually helped build two years ago at the Montreal um, uh, conference. And then we're going to do at least two types of data conversions. We'll, we'll use Siemens and GE, and then if there's still time, we can do some, some of the Brooker data. Um, and I'll show you a sort of simple Python reconstruction just to so, show you how to, how to work with this format too. Okay. So, um, so what is vendor agnostic MRI data? So it's, uh, it's essentially, it's an open source format that can be used as a common interface between proprietary systems and us in the research community. So very simply, if we can transform raw data from vendors such as GE, Siemens, Brooker, Canon, Philips, et cetera, into a sort of data consistent format, then we only have to perform the reconstruction code once and that just helps us to enable reproducible research because we have open source code, helps us to share that, and we can have consistent structures to sort of 
uh, enable people to take existing code and work with how to expand it to their own needs. Um, and so really the, the open source aspects that we want to sort of inject into this general pipeline, which we usually see on the scanner where we have our data being acquired, the scanner does its own recon and puts the images back on the scanner. We can kind of <laughs> inject ourselves at this point and have a raw data format that works for no matter where the source is and have an image data format that can also be um, sort of easily shared and in our case, transformed back to DICOM when it goes back to the scanner. Um, of course, having consistent data formats is super useful for making large data repositories when we want to create multi-vendor, multi-site data for, for machine learning uh, applications and stuff, so, uh, such things like that. So um, existing formats, are um, there's a .ra format that was developed, and these are not an ex exhaustive list. These are just some examples, but there, there's the .ra MRD, which is what we're going to be talking about today, uh, which we use for Gadstron, and there's also the data format used for the fast MRI data set. And we have the CFL files that BART uses for, for their entity. And then the image-based format, uh, we just heard about DICOM, we also have Nifty and BIDS, which is a brain-specific one. So there are things that already exist there out there, but we're going to be focusing today on MRD, as it has both a raw data and an image data um, open source structure. So the MRD, or the MRI raw data, formerly known as ISMRMRD, um, which takes me a lot of time to practice saying that that quickly. Um, it was originally a community effort to standardize raw data, and this paper was published about five years ago, where multiple people from around the MR community came together to try to sort of make a data set that will encompass uh, every single conceivable type of MR experiment that we can. It uses an H5 sort of open source format for storing the data, and this HDF5 is also used and I believe maintained by NASA, so it's not just us being weird. Um, and generally, the concept being was we have this MRD format, this is taken from the paper, where we can cover multiple dimensions of an experiment, so three-dimensional coding, slices, averaging, cardiac phases, etc. And if you can use up more than all these encoding steps in one experiment, congratulations to you. <laughs> you have a 10 dimensional experiment um, and good luck trying to reconstruct it. But generally this just shows us the mapping of how different vendors uh, call these things different names and how we try to sort of take um, sort of inconsistent conventions to one uh, Uber convention that lives within the MRD. Um, just to reiterate, this is all just a community driven effort and it's taken a lot of people and a lot of years working pretty hard to make sure these things work with the vendors. So we, within the ISM or MRD project on GitHub, we have the, the main code for, for the data format itself, as well as various converters from Siemens, Philips, G, um, and Brooker, as well as the, the Python package that we'll be using later on. So just as a slight detour, how, just to say how we use MRD, um, to ge generally, as was alluded to in the previous session as well, we actually stream line by line from the scanner. Uh, and again, just to, this will be the, the black boxes will be the normal way how the scanner takes its own raw data, goes through its own reconstruction, which for you uh, familiar with Siemens, that'd be the ice reconstruction pipelines and comes back to the host. But we, uh, inject ourselves at this point, we can take the raw data and take out, stream it to our own uh, servers, computers, or even cloud reconstruction, uh, sorry, cloud deployment to do our own custom reconstruction, um, which gives a lot of flexibility in terms of how we want to do it and how we can maximize speed. Um, that'll be otherwise just unattainable within the sort of the vendor provided reconstruction machines. Um, what we're going to be covering in this class is the offline version where we already have our raw data downloaded and we'll use a uh, super plus or a julia based converter and then we'll have the mrd format which then we can perform our reconstruction so just to reiterate we have currently these four vendors supported within the mrd but if you have your own vendor and you want to get involved then it is very much possible to to do this okay so Again, just recapping what goes into an MRD data set. From a raw data point of view, we have three components, or two main components, mostly just the experimental header 
and the MLK space, which is then line by line uh, written into the H5 file with an associated header, which I'll show you in a minute. And we also have flexible extra information you can add in, such as waveforms, which could be your physiology data, such as ECG or respiration, or you can feed in your gradient information uh, and field monitoring, kind of whatever you want. This is um, made to be flexible such that you can send in what you want that's pertinent to the experiment for reconstruction. Um, and then from an image point of view, we, it's a bit, a bit more simple. We still have an image of an associated header, but we also have the capacity to add in um, sort of metadata similar to DICOM, so we can include things such as contours and landmarks. So you can see how uh, all this information, it could be very useful for data sharing when you're trying to make reproducible research or uh, machine learning re repositories. Again, just to reiterate, and we're going to walk into this now with a bit more detail and a less crazy pace, but just again, the three main structures that we have in the raw data file will be the XML header, which will be the experimental header, which will include things such as your field of view, your matrix size, that kind of overarching uh, components of your experiment. We have the line by line raw data chunks, which will be your data header associated with each line case space. So for example, if this is your first line of your Cartesian case space, this will tell you that, that this is indeed the first line. Um, and then we have a different dimension uh, and flexible waveform component that can be also written with its own header and samples. And the image is exactly the same thing, just it has the data and the associated header with it. So um, with that, let's take a look around within some of the existing data that I've shared with you. So I'm going to switch to my um, virtual machine here. And so I've, I've downloaded the MRI Together MRD GitHub repo here. And so if you follow the instructions to install the MRD viewer, which is here if you've not found it, as yet, it's very easy, very easy install. You can just do the pip install of the item MRD viewer. And then we can visualize MRD, oops, MRD files. So if you just type it in by itself, you get the opportunity to select your file, but you can also do a, a second argument on the command line. And inside data, I have a already converted Siemens data file for us to look at. And this is the sort of bare minimum that we need for raw data set. So we have the header information which is the experimental header, which I'll just break it down like this. We'll include things like the time it was acquired, somebody was working too late that night, um, information about the, the noise information that's associated with this, um, the vendor information, the field strength, the coils that you're using. Uh, okay, experimental frequency. And then the, I guess, more interesting from a recon point of view, encoding space. So as we saw before in Philip's um, demonstration, if you have oversampling in our Cartesian acquisition, we, we have sort of double the matrix size from the encoded space. In the recon space, this is the actual sort of us four dimensions, so we can just halve that if you want to. And then the encoding limits, this will describe your experiment. So if you're doing averaging, multi slice etc then these things will be non zero and in the acquisitions part of things we can see if i take the first line of case space here we see the magnitude of real information uh, sorry magnitude of phase information for, for that first line we can choose all the channels that we had available to us um, and each line of case space as i'm clicking on it will have an associated bunch of um, header information. So that tells us this is the first line of case space. We can have average slice, face, etc. So all of those uh, header information is, is carried with each line of case space. We have we can take the physiology and do ECG gating. We can take the position if we're doing multi-slice. So all of this information is is put in here. And so this is, you know, if uh, if I go to more interesting slice, oh sorry, line number then and start seeing indeed that's the Cartesian acquisition. So that's our sort of bare minimum that we need for a, an a raw data MRD data set. The header, 
experiment and the line by line acquisitions. I'm going to just show you an example that unfortunately you don't have because it was too large for GitHub. What it looks like when you have uh, waveforms in there as well. Um, cardiac data set. And so now you see there's a third component. So we have a, the header information as before. But now we also have waveform information available to us. Oh, good. It's okay, we'll stop clicking that. Um, and the same thing again, the, the data looks exactly the same. It doesn't matter what the experiment was or which vendor provided it. It's the format of the whole thing is the same, which is the beauty of the MRD. But in the waveforms, it's going to look a little less impressive, but this is, for example, a small chunk of the respiration uh, from the from the bellows for this experiment. Um, and we also, also have ECG information, but as it's all chunked up in tiny little um, time uh, time chunks of the experiment, it there it looks a little bit more difficult to, to realize here. But you can then um, unpack this data and line it up for your ECG and RASP or whatever you've set fed into it. Um, and use that for your experiment as needed. Okay, so that's that's having a look around the MRD data set. Um, and if anybody's got, if anybody's trying to follow along and having any problems, just let us know. We're next going to move on to converting from a seamless data set to um, our MRD. So, if you've not found it as yet, there we have Siemens to ISMRMRD. There's an install guide again on this page too that you can use. This does a sudo uh, install, so just make sure you have the appropriate um, well, things installed as well as permissions. But once you have successfully installed it, you'll be greeted with something that looks so it's a command line base. Um, the bare minimum that we need to convert a, a data file is to give it a, the F flag, um, as well as choose your measurement number, which for example, with our Siemens, if we copy the noise data with our data file, the first measurement is going to be the corresponding noise or sensitivity map data. And the second measurement is going to be our actual raw data. So you have to be a little bit mindful of, of what's packed into your data before you convert it. We do have this option of doing uh, capital Z uh, and, and capital M if you want to just convert everything and not worry about it as well. So that's a, that's a more modern update. Um, we have options to, uh, and oh, sorry, we also need to give it this O for the output. So very simply, and I've got an example here, in the shell script. This just shows us we can give it a dash F for the Siemens data. You're choosing the second part of the measurement because I know there's two measurements in here. And the output file is also going to exist there. Um, and if I want to do the noise file, it's the same thing, but we give it a dash C1. Now, as you can see, there are lots of other things happening here. And that's because over the years, people have worked on different Siemens systems and the <coughs> platforms have evolved to the to extent that um, you might need to give more specific information. For example, if you're doing um, any sort of pa uh, ex parallel acceleration uh, reference scans, then you can give it a flag there. And there's a two-step process to Siemens to ISMRD, which is nicely explained down here, which talks about how you can extract specific parameters in your in your data and sort of put it into the header if it, if it doesn't already exist there. I'm not going to get into that right now because I think it's actually time to do some data conversions. Um, so I'm going to if just- I, If I can just jump in for a moment, just to sure. let people know, I, I think we're at the point of the presentation now that if you have questions or are trying to follow along or having any issues, please do drop off mute and, and join the conversation. I believe, is that what you're ready for at this point? Yeah, this is, this yes. is it. <laughs> I actually, I have a question. Sure. Um, 
I can turn my video on quickly. Hey, um, so just background, I haven't worked with Siemens um, and I haven't worked with raw data for about seven years, but I've just <laughs> inherited a data set with a bunch of different um, vendor raw data from different scanners. Is there a priori information that I need to know to be able to take the raw data I have and actually go ahead and convert it? So like, I don't know what this measurement flag is that you were talking about, but you mentioned that you know that you have two. Is that something where like this is potentially a lost cause for me or I can just take um, what I have, run it, see if I get something or? <laughs> well, I always like... suggest doing the, the latter first. Um, <laughs> the, so I, I actually also have a, a script here if I just in the shell. What have I got now? Yeah, the, so this example, show this is how I do this for a script base. If the depending on how many data sets I, or what kind of data sets I have, they, that, that number could vary. Um, and so I actually do this cheat where I, I stick in a very large number and that actually will return you the number of files in there. Um, so that's okay. that's one way of doing it. So if I were to do, i just choose. And so is that the only flag that you potentially have to manually input yourself, or like you said, with the with this workaround. Um, <clears throat> yes. Like, or, okay. Okay, I've done something wrong there because I can't. One second. But, or, or better yet, you just use that capital capital Z version. Um, what have I got here? Right, so exactly this it will tell you how much there are there in there. That's like one one way wow, one way to do it. Okay. Or you can do this. I want to say for its data. So it's in it's in the raw data and the vendor raw data. Uh, for at least and for Siemens. For Siemens. Yeah. For Siemens. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> And so for, for now, for this one, I've just done uh, for your example, that's a great question. I, I just told it to do all measurements and also the dash M will pack it all into one file. So now I've got Laura's data, sorry to throw you under the bus. Um, okay. Which is just one file, but that contains both sets. So mm -hmm. if I open it up, can I spell this? I assume I'm wrong. RD. RD, yeah, there we go. This is why we changed the name. Um, <laughs> so now we can see there's two data sets that have been converted in here. So you can have access to both the noise data um, and your actual experimental data. Something's gone wrong back there. Um, but for other vendors, I'm afraid uh, I'm less experienced <laughs> with working with them. We'll go for a GE conversion shortly. Um, okay. uh, but but it, it is possible. Um, okay. But but you can always, uh, as I said, always reach out to us when we're not um, evil aliens, and we're happy to help people get through their problems. It looks like we have a hand raised. Yes. Actually, I think you're muted. No, I think I'm muted. Uh, Dr. Esses, did you have a question? Looks like he's having a hard time with his mute button. He's unmuted, but we're not getting Is it in. possible to select the last measurement? Uh, I mean, essentially, that, that's what I do in this. Um, in this script that I've shared with you, if we go into the shell, we can just, if you ignore the, the for loop, um, you can just query it with that large number that I've never seen an experiment have more than three components to it. Uh, and then just take that number and just, um, sorry, ignore that bit, and then just convert it here. That will just do just the last. Yeah, that could also work. Yeah. Um, 
Maybe I mean honestly, it's a this is a kind of a background thing that we do without thinking about it too much. Um, and there have been new newer features introduced that that may do this. But I'll look, I'll ask and uh, get back to you if, if if we can do it that way. That's that's a good idea. Thank you, Philip. All right, so let's just perform a conversion. I'm going to go into my data folder and just remove the existing converted Cartesian data so we can see it happen and also the noise. And if we go into our shell and just run this Siemens data, it will go through both those data sets and then now. Oops, because I'm in the folder. And now we have those data converted. So it's just a, a very simple example of helping you get to grips with sort of basics in this data conversion. So now we can have a go at doing some Python just to reconstruct this. And I've made a very simple Python reconstructor also, again, just within the Python part of this um, code. Um, you just need to install a couple of packages if you want to run this. And it sh should just run standalone like this. But you can also feed it a, a file argument, which we'll do for both the Siemens and yeah, uh, GE data shortly. But just to sort of show you briefly, that, I mean, these are the bare minimum packages we need to, to work with ISMRD. Um, and the rest of it is just kind of just for displaying purposes for this example. You can use the MRD uh, Python package to load this and it has some pre-baked tools to help it interpret the XML header, which is the experimental header, into an actual readable structure. And if we read this structure for the encoding information, if we read the substructure for the first encoding, which usually only have one for your experiment, but you can have multiple, then we can extract things like the matrix sizes, the number of averaging, the number of slices, all these kind of things for the experiment. So we can then create a, uh, a 10 dimensional case based structure based off the number of channels plus uh, all these components of your experiment. And this should ideally, this example is just here to show you how to extract the most generic scan that, that, you, that can encompass all components. Um, and once we build that case base, we will then go through line by line, read each acquisition in the MRD data set and take each acquisitions header to inform us where it should go within our case base. And once we've reached this line 85, we've now got a case base that's been fully populated for whatever dimensions of your, your experiment there is. Uh, the remainder of this is just a quick example using the Gadistron Python uh, package to do a simple reconstruction. But you can do anything with it at this point. If you want to send it to your own Python, if you're going to use SigPy, if you can use Bar, it's it's completely up to you at this point. And so if I if I quickly go to Python and just run, give it the data we just made. We'll see you, it will pull out the values of our dimension of the dimensions of our experiment, which is a very simple single repetition with Cartesian oversampled, uh, hence why we have this rectangular shape. Uh, and then it just shows us our image. So it's a pretty easy um, uh, example here. But now we're going to show you how the power of MRD that we can work with GE data and also get the same result, hopefully. So I'm going to pass it over to Asan. I can just uh, read off a question that came in and chat yeah. real quick uh, from Jacob Aslander uh, asking or saying, a, thanks for a nice overview. Could you comment on the completeness of the header? I've so far been hesitant to use MRD as I do not want to store large data sets twice. And I'm worried that there is information in the Siemens header that I might need later. And I'm not sure if it is fully included in the MRD format. Uh, I mean, that's a great question. I mean, again, it's, I guess, similar to, to the DICOM uh, thing of like, you will always need specific things for you. There are user parameter fields within, within the MRD that you can use to store a lot of sort of abstract information, um, which 
borrows for the, from the Siemens like user whip parameters fields. So it does have the capacity to do that. And again, it's a it's a it's a collaborative kind of uh, environment. So if if, you, if there are fields you feel that should be reflected within MRD, we always have scope to try and incorporate these things into it. So yes, I I totally agree that there's probably some things that are missing. Um, but the the MRD format is trying is built to be flexible to try to accommodate for most things too. Ideally, I'm not familiar with the the Siemens format itself, but I could imagine something like with GE system where you might be able to archive off, so to speak, the the P file header, which is small relative to the size of the P file inside of the MRD format, and then be able to, if you really wanted to reconstitute the p file later in a bit exact manner so to speak i don't know if that's functionality that's there but i could imagine that might help people try you know using this format if you're if you know you can get back exactly it is possible to isolate the header file from the siemens uh data set and that can help to to reduce um particularly for large 3D data sets, having, uh, having them both doubled up in terms of memory usage. So um, yeah, that's, that's a good point too. I have a question from Emily Waters. Uh, I'm interested in using MRD with Brooker data. However, unless I'm missing something, it seems like the Brooker converter isn't actively developed. Is it unable, unusable in its current form? Uh, and from which version? It's a great question. So yes, you're quite right, the Brooker um, development is a little stale. Um, it was pushed at the time when we released the MRD format. Uh, and so the current power vision may be um, not connected to this. So for the later on in this demonstration, um, I'm just going to show you because I think we're probably going to run out of time here. Um, there is in the MATLAB part of things, it's a little secret, a bit of Julia. I have used this package, MRI Rico, which I came across, where someone has developed a Julia package that can also work with MRD data sets, showing you the power how when you have an open source format that you can you can build something to, to, the, to its specifications and hopefully it should all work. Um, so it is pos possible to bring in a Brooker file and convert it. And I just have a, a simple example in how to, how to reconstruct that in MATLAB because it, there are some parameters that are missing um, and I'll update my code shortly because actually somebody reached out to me to show how they've managed to circumvent that. But again, reach out to me later on if uh, if you have any trouble, but I, I just use this in Julia and it actually worked fairly well. It's pretty straightforward to, to do. Um, right, so I'm just going to pass to Asen for the last 10 minutes. And uh, and then we'll, we'll try to cram in as much as we can before the end. Um, Raj, do you mind uh, sh uh, stopping your screen yeah. share so I can share my screen? Thank you. All right, can you guys see a terminal window here? Yeah, can you zoom in a little bit maybe? Uh, yes. Uh, oh boy. Um, Control Shift Plus maybe. Oh, there we go. Yeah, sorry. Switching keyboards. Okay, so um, I'm going to just demonstrate like a simple GE, GE to ISMRD converter. Um, I think that it's a uh, part of our. Sorry, I'm just going to navigate to it uh, the right way. <laughs> and. Um, it's part of the program. If you go to our um, session here at the bottom, uh, there is a GE to GE data conversion to ISM or MRD. Um, and this is a converter that's primarily ma maintained by uh, Vinay, who's also at uh, NHLBI. And he has a much more detailed demo of how to install it. The key thing that that's different from the Siemens converter is that this requires you to have uh, GE Orchestra installed on your system. And um, as I understand it, I think it's, it is possible on an Ubuntu machine, but it's easiest if you just do it on an OpenSUSE uh, 15.2, I think is the latest one that they're using. So if you have GE Orchestra set up, um, I 
have a script that I, it's a very simple um, shell script that I wrote to help with the um, installation. Um, sorry, it's right here. Uh, that you can take a look at. Uh, it's not doing anything that's too complicated, uh, but it just kind of sets up some paths and tries to install the uh, install the GE tools in your uh, basically home folder. Uh, there are there are certain things that are important, and I think Dr. Pinay goes through it. That uh, I think you have to set the HDF five root to use the same one, uh, same HDF five package that Orchestra uses. And as long as you do that, I think everything else kind of works. So we'll just go quickly go through the conversion. Uh, so basically, if you run the script, it goes through. Uh, should do the install, and then you should have it. It it uh, it, it adds some things to your bash RC. So you just need to do your dot bash uh, to basically just set up the path. Once that's done, uh, you have the GE2 to GE to ISMRD converter. And that has options that are different from the Siemens one. This is a little bit less, uh, I would say it's, it's a little bit uh, more basic, but the key option to think about it is the it has the option to do plugins. So, and um, I think you can go through Dr. Binet's demo again to look at what the plugins do, but the plugins essentially give you the ability to just change what information gets put into the into the file. So if, for example, if you're doing a spiral imaging and you wanna add uh, waveforms or something, then you can use the plugins to kind of add your trajectories to the file. Then there are these style sheets that maybe Raj will touch on at the end if, if you have time, but this is how the parameters are mapped from the vendor specific header to the uh, to the MRD header and there is a there is a basic uh, version of it which um, I think it would be used for this demo but then you can play around with uh, these to kind of get the correct parameters into the MRD header file so for the purposes of our demo uh, again I'll also use another file that I wrote uh, that does a basic conversion and it it right now in its current state the Converter is able to handle both P files and uh, scan archives, I think, which is the new uh, GE format. Um, I haven't worked with scan archives personally, but uh, this is data that I got from Binet as well. And both of these should be converted to, uh, we should be able to convert these to the MRD format and then use them with the reconstructions. So again, this is fairly straightforward. Uh, Convert to G data file. I will go, go through and convert both of them, both of these, and then in your data, uh, we'll have we have these two uh, files here: the GE converted GE data files uh, and the scan archive files. Since I'm using this in a <laughs> In a in a in a container running as root, I don't have the permissions outside, so I just have to set the permissions. It's a pretty, um, and I'm running a Docker image. I think depending on what, how you're running it, you may not need to do this step. And then outside, again, uh, when we look at this data, um, sorry, shift uh, converted GE uh, data dot h five. So again, like Raj was showing earlier, now we have we have the data set, we have the header and the acquisitions. And in this case, um, this is the GE to ISMRD data collection, and we can basically look at the header information similar to what we had for Siemens. And then the acquisition has uh, all the information also correctly stored. Um, well, something broke here, sorry about that. Um, oops, <laughs> All right, we will ignore that for now. <laughs> uh, but I think that I think once we have the data, uh, again, just based on what Rod was showing earlier, we can again use the same script that we used for Siemens uh, to reconstruct this data. And I think that kind of is the beauty of the whole thing is that once you have everything in the standard format, we can then just reconstruct these images and uh, all of it works 
pretty nicely. Um, okay, for the last uh, five minutes, we're going to just do a, a lightning conversions of some other data formats. <laughs> um, we had some questions about Brooker, so we'll we'll do that quickly, uh, and then I'll I'll just show you the remnant of the slides. And again, they're available on the so that's the Python. So if you if you do follow the MATLAB, oh, sorry, if you do follow this the spiral part, is again it's a Siemens data which you can convert. To, to, to. There is a, a sort of a command line uh, instructions how to do that for the spiral data, and I have provided in our data format data folder right. already an. I, you're not sharing your screen. I'm not sharing my screen, which is if you can imagine what I'm saying to you. Uh, which screen are you looking at? Can you see my? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, so just to recap what I was talking about. So in the MATLAB folder, there are some instructions here to do, do the data conversion. And this will be the sort of generic data con conversion that we can do without any sort of prior knowledge about the spiral trajectories. But in the data repo, sorry, in the data folder, I do also have an already existing spiral one with trajectories attached per acquisition line. So again, it's just showing how you can have a complete data set from the raw data. So I've manually added in the spiral trajectories um, such that if you were to generate the trajectories using the generic Hargreaves code, you'll, you'll have these um, gradient imperfections uh, within our trajectories that are predicted. And then with the ones that I've attached, they have the GERF corrected trajectories, which are a system specific information. So it's one way of, I can put my system information into the raw data without you having to know everything about it, having to do your own measurements for, for gradient calibrations and whatnot. So it's, it's already there, it's baked in. So there's that example, but we're gonna run out of time, but we did the GE data. Um, we'll quickly talk about how when you, there are some differences, there's these parameter maps, which I touched upon earlier, but when we take from the G data, for example, there is a sort of a scale order between the resonant frequencies that go wrong or where you pull <clears throat> things like the echo train lint from will come from different things. So if you are creating your own parameter map or working with a new version of software, then often these things are, are where you can try to extract relevant information from. Um, and there's a really great tutorial that was at the Gadgetron course last year, which is linked within our, our file, uh, sorry, uh, within our readme for this tutorial. So just very, very quickly, I installed Julia on my And there are instructions on how to install the MRI Rico package. But essentially, we can do just four lines to Oh, because I've got to see what I'm using. There's a question that came up while you're going mm -hmm. through with this. Um, just on how well maintained the different parts of the MRD project are. Uh, she met, met, noticed that you're both having issues with uh, items breaking. Is this just a <laughs> curse of live demos or uh, is there something else more nefarious going on? I don't know if you'd like to speak to that. I think it's partly the curse of live demos. <laughs> and I think, um... It's it's mostly that I I would say that uh, since we use these tools every day, uh, generally the bugs do come up. They're squashed pretty quickly, um, and I think that these projects are still actively maintained. So if there is a bug and you file a bug report on GitHub, um, our experience has been that it's uh, taken care of uh, on uh, fairly quickly. Yes, right. I mean, I mean or... as everything with research, it's always. You know, there are things that go wrong. Um, 
and also with with the some of the data like coming from different sources it might also like crash because it's it's looking for certain things right um but, right and, and users can always look on on github and look at the history and see how frequently it's being updated right. as some sort of a hint to that we are coming up to the top of the hour here or we're actually past the top of the hour uh, did you have anything you wanted to wrap up with here before we yeah i have a concluding slide so just just to quickly show you that i just did that brooker while we we're talking about uh, bugs but it has some missing fields but it's generally along the right lines and you can still use the matlab example i have to to do a, um, a reconstruction of that we'll skip that for the minute but just to show that if you do the matlab it should look something like this there's some exigo brains that the mri rico guys provided so in general working with mr data uh, MRI raw data, um, it's built to be flexible to do what you need. Um, and and we have uh, sort of, it is being actively developed in the sense that right now we have Julia support coming, which is a very popular language right now in our community. And also we have a sort of storage, like a MRD server, which can store same session information. So if you want to share information across your reconstructions within, uh, within your reconstruction. So these are things that are incoming or already released. Um, and so if you want to be involved or you have problems, we have a Friday call at 4 p.m. UTC, um, which is with the Gazatron community and the Gazatron community and the MRT community are kind of one and the same. Um, and here are lots of people that have helped contribute to, to all of the things in the, in the last few years as well. The people in my lab who have been pretty active uh, uh, along this project. Um, and you can come to this discourse group and, and find out more information. But please don't hesitate to contact Asana or myself uh, if you have specific problems or if you just want to have a gateway to get involved. Yeah. And I think that the, the like Raj said, I, like this this group, the discourse group, uh, it's very active. And then again, the call is probably the fastest way. Like every Friday, you can probably get whatever issues you're having resolved. <laughs> yeah. And again, this is all we're, we're not paid to develop MRD, right? This is all community stuff. So if there are things you want in it, it can be all incorporated and we can try to fix bugs. And so, you know, it takes every everyone to contribute to, to make to make this work. And it's ongoing as, as things get updated behind your back from different vendors, et cetera. So um, yeah, thank you everybody for tuning in. I hope this has been useful. Um, thank you, Eric, for, for hosting us. And thank you, uh, Laura, for organizing. Yes, thank you all, and let's uh, thank our speakers again. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day and rest of the conference. The next sessions are coming up in a few hours. Uh, you can look on the Zoom events schedule for when they are in your time zone. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.